If you guys are using the Divi theme and you're not using the Divi theme builder, there's something wrong. With the Divi theme builder, you guys can create beautiful custom headers and footers, custom 404 pages, and also custom blog pages, all using the Divi builder. My name is Daryl Wilson, and today in this video, I'll walk you guys through a complete Divi theme builder tutorial. So I'll first be showing you guys how to create a custom header and footer. I'll then be showing you how to create a custom 404 page. Then I'll show you how to create various headers on various pages. Then we'll jump into the blog aspect. So I'll show you guys how to create a blog page, how to create a blog category page, and then I'll show you how to create custom blog posts using the Divi Builder. This is gonna be part one of my part two series. So in this series, I'll be covering all of the website aspects of Divi. And in the second part, I'll be covering all of the e-commerce aspects, like how to create a custom shop page and how to make beautiful custom product pages that look great. So make sure to subscribe. Now, I recently had a Divi tutorial where I covered a majority of these options. So I'm gonna take part of that video and put it here. Uh, some Someone in my comments told me I'm recycling my content, but uh, a lot of it's covered in that video, but a lot of people don't wanna watch a four hour video. So I'm gonna take that section, put it here, and I'll add to it by adding the blog post section for this tutorial. So you guys ready? Let's go ahead and jump into how to create a beautiful website with the Divi theme builder. All right, party people, welcome to the Divi theme builder section of this video. In this part of the video, I'll be explaining what the Divi Theme Builder is and how to use it. Uh, with the Divi Theme Builder, you guys can enable custom headers, custom footers, custom 404 pages using the actual Divi Builder. For example, we have this menu here at the top and this is all controlled by the Theme Customizer. However, you guys can also build your own menu with the actual Divi Theme elements and I'll walk you guys through on how to do that. So let's go ahead and go to our dashboard here. We'll go down to Divi and click on Theme Builder. So this is the Divi Theme Builder options. Here you can see that we can have a global header, a global body, and also a global footer. We can also click on New Template here and we can create specific templates for specific parts of the websites. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do another example here in just a bit. But what I first wanna do is I wanna walk you guys through on how to create a global header. Now you guys saw previously that we are using the default menu with the theme customizer. So I wanna use the theme builder here. So I'm gonna first click on uh, build a global header and click on build global header. And now you'll see that the Divi builder is loading here. All right, so right now we're brought to the screen where we can now use the Divi builder. So what I wanna do here is I wanna build out a custom uh, header that we can design using the Divi builder. So right here, I'll click on the plus and then go to uh, we're gonna go to this one here, right? Where it has this large menu and also this really small section. Uh, I'm doing this because I wanna have the menu here with enough space to work with and then also have the button here because the button doesn't really need a lot of space, right? So right here, I will click on menu, click on check. Now you guys can see that our menu has self-propagated here. And then also over here, I'm gonna add from library and I wanna add in the button that we've been using uh, throughout the entire website, right? And this can lead to like your contact form uh, by clicking on the gear icon for the link. This would be like, you know, your, you know, your website.com slash contact us or something. You know, it would just be the link of a, you know, whatever page you wanted users to go to, right? So um, now that we've done that, I wanna reduce this padding because now you can see this menu is too big, right? It's, it's a lot of white space and I wanna get rid of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this padding. I'm gonna get rid of all that. And then also for this section here, I also wanna get rid of the padding. So spacing, zero and zero, right? Or maybe like, I don't know, let's do like two pixels and two pixels or something like that. Okay, so there we go. We got the menu there. Uh, one thing though is I think this button's a little bit too close to the top of the page. So let's say for example, you wanted to control only one part of the actual column. Here for row settings for column two, I wanna to go to design, go to the spacing, and I wanna add a little bit more just for that one right there, just for that row. You know, I want the button to be just a little bit more center, right? Makes sense. Now we need to add in a logo, right? So let's do that. Here under the actual uh, element here, I'll click on the gear icon for logo. We will then add in our logo, right? So let's go ahead and add in our logo here. And there it is. It's really big, but not to worry. We can go ahead and change the size of that by going to uh, design logo. We'll then go ahead and scroll down here. Just keep scrolling, just keep scrolling. And then, oh, I'm sorry, it's gonna be sizing. And here I'll go ahead and adjust the logo width. 
right? There we go. 20, 22. That looks good. I mean, what do you guys think? That looks pretty good to me, right? So I'll go ahead and give it the check mark. Now, I want to add in a background color to this. Now, there's a few options here. What I can do is I can actually make this menu transparent so it'll absorb this background, or I can manually add in the color myself. It really doesn't matter. I'm first just going to go ahead and save this really quick. All right, so we're going to save it. I will then close this, and then I'll click on Save Changes. I'll go back to our website, and now I will refresh the page. Okay, and there you go. So we have our menu here, and if we go to the services, you guys can see uh, it goes to all the pages. All right, pretty cool. Looks good. All right, so from here, we have a few options. You guys can either decide, you know what, I want to add a background, or I want to leave it like this, or, you know, whatever you want to do. But for tutorial purposes, I'm going to add in a background color here. So I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to re-enable the builder, and I want to add a background here. Now, there's a trick to this, because remember, these modules also have a background color as well. So we need to go ahead and make sure that the background color is applied to this section, this section, and also the module itself. Let me give you an example. Here for the actual backgrounds, I'll go ahead and add a background color here, and I'll add in the first background color. You guys can see how it's only applied to bits and parts of the menu, right? We now need to add it to the middle part right here. All right, backgrounds, background color, paste it there, and then check mark it. Now, the last part that we need to do is we actually need to add it to this little uh, element. This actual element actually has a background color, <laughs> believe it or not. Here, click on the gear icon, go to background, and here it's using this white background by default. I can actually just delete that, and now you see that it has a transparent background, and the column section is adding the color. So here, I'll click on check. And now I'll go ahead and save this. Okay, and we can go back to our website here and refresh the page. And voila. So now you guys can see how it just blends really well uh, with the actual menu. So uh, that is an example of how you guys can create a custom header. Now I've already created a custom header for you guys that's fully optimized. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know what? Uh, this is good and all, but uh, you're getting the treatment. You know, you're getting deleted. And I wanna go ahead and import the templates that I actually uh, gave you guys. So right here is the Arise, and here we have the actual header. I'll open this, and I will import the Divi Builder. All right, cool. So you guys can see it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, I just need to maybe adjust the actual font here. I think Joss is a really good one, right? Let's go ahead and change this to, uh, was it Joss? Let's see where we can find it here, menu text. Ooh, red hat text, ugly, ugly, yeah, ugly. Here, Joss and check. And then I'll click on save. All right, cool. So that's how we can add a, a global header over here to our uh, website. Now let's go ahead and add in a hey, global footer. Listen. Right here, I'll do the same thing. Add a global footer and click on build a global footer. All right, and what we're gonna do here is we're actually just gonna load the template here and I'm actually gonna explain to you how all this works because this can be a little complicated, especially for beginners. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this click on the imports, and then we're going to import the actual footer layout, and I'll explain to you guys exactly how this works. So here I will click on import Divi Builder layout. Okay, so this is our current footer, right? And this is a really nice footer, except I wanna to explain to you guys how this actually works, right? So here we actually have elements, right? We have a, a text setting, right? And this right here is also text, okay? So these are just text modules. Below that, we have this little uh, an email button. We have this other text. We have some more text. We actually added, I think there's an image here or a logo. I'm not sure which one it is. It could be both. Yeah, just an image. And then we have this other text right here at the bottom. Now, these are not actual links, right? These are just random text. So we need to actually make these link to specific parts of our website. So for example, our services, right? I'm gonna change this to pages, okay? And uh, right here, I'm gonna go ahead and take this, take this text, and this is gonna be our home page. Oops, oops, whoopsies. And next, we're going to take this, and this is going to be our services page. This is gonna be our about us, about us. And lastly, this is gonna be our contact 
us page. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. Okay, we don't need these because these are actually not really part of our websites. Now we have these four uh, texts, but these are not links, right? You can see that they're not links and they're not really uh, linking us anywhere. We need to actually link these to our specific pages. So going back over here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to our uh, homepage here and we're gonna copy this link. We're then gonna go back to our home. We'll double click and here I will insert the link. I don't know why it's down there, that's weird. <laughs> and then I'll press enter. And for the actual services, we can do the same thing here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just open this up really quick just to give you guys a better visual. So here we have the actual services page, right? And I'm actually going to go ahead and also click on the link and the URL. We're gonna go here, oh my bad, <laughs> whoops, here we go. Uh, copy the services page, and then we're going to paste it in there like that. Now, I do have an option here. I can actually choose to open this in a new tab if I want to, but um, I don't think that's a good idea. That, that would be kind of annoying, right? That means if they click on the services button right here, it'll force their browser to open a new tab. But I'm just going to leave it as uh, services. Next, we have the about us. Same thing here. I will link the about us here. All right, and then lastly, we have the contact us where uh, we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste that right there like this. And then I'll click on check. Now you guys can also add in any other elements that you guys want. For example, over here, I will say, you know what? Maybe I wanna add in the uh, the button right there. You know, maybe this can be like a free ebook button or something, who knows, you know, but you can add in other modules here and you guys can actually build your entire footer from scratch using the actual Divi Builder. Now there's a lot of different ways on how to get customizable with this, but for tutorial purposes, I'm just gonna leave it there because I think that's enough and I think you guys have a good understanding of what this does. All right, so now that I've actually created this footer, I'm now going to go over here and click on save. All right, and now we'll go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page. All right, and now you guys can see that we have this beautiful footer here at the bottom. And if users click on these little links right here, uh, it'll take them to the About Us page. And if I scroll down here, you'll also see that this footer still is on every single page because we set it to be a global, right? So if we keep scrolling, uh, there it is. And then the contact us. And there it is. So yeah, that's how you guys can enable a custom header and footer on your WordPress website using the Divi Builder. Now let's say for example, you guys also wanted to add another page here. Uh, let's say for example, if someone enters the wrong address, right? Someone enters something wrong. And then they're brought to this page right here, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? It doesn't look good. It's not part of your website. You know, it's part of the theme. And it just, it doesn't make any sense, right? Hey, Let's go ahead and add in a 404 over here. So I'll click on add a new template. And then I'll go ahead and go to 404 page and click on create a template. Now with the 404, you can see that we still have the global header and the footer applied, but I also wanna add in a custom body right here. So I'll click on add a custom body. And then I'll click on build custom body. All right, now for tutorial purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and actually just use a template here. So I'm gonna click on these little three little dots. And just for tutorial purposes, I'll go ahead and just uh, grab this one here. All right, I think this one will work. Yeah, this one will work. And I will use this layout. I know what you guys are thinking, Daryl, this looks, this looks like really big. This is a whole website. Don't worry guys, we'll go ahead and just use specific elements to uh, achieve what we're trying to accomplish. All right, so I loaded up this page. Now I first need to go ahead and delete all these other sections, right? So I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and delete all these sections here just because I don't need them, right? I just want to actually use the actual landing page and there we go, all right? Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna delete this. I don't want this either. And I'm just gonna change this to like 404, right? Like, are you lost? Go back home. And I'm gonna quickly go ahead and make this a one column row, right? And then I will center align this to the middle, right? Makes sense. We're going to center align this. You guys can see my magic here, right? You guys can do this for pretty much everything, right? Like it's really simple. So uh, I'm pro at this, you guys can tell, huh? There we go. I don't wanna use this button, right? I'm gonna delete that. And I'm gonna add in mine from the actual button library here. I'm also going to make sure that this is center align. 
And for the background here, I'll just go ahead and change this background. I'll get rid of this, uh, this one and I'll add in my own background color. And then for the actual background color, I'll just use the same color that we've been using over here for a while right here. So the background, it looks like somewhere else is actually using, oh, right here, there we go. And then we would probably just have to change this to like black, right? Because uh, this this text is too white, right? So I'll just go ahead and oh, we need to do the other color, the heading text, sorry. The heading text, make this black, right? And then also just make this black as well. This is a paragraph text. And there you go. Uh, but we got to change this to Jost, right? To Jost because uh, this is, uh, no, it's the header, heading text. My bad. Heading text. Default. You guys can tell I'm not on a script, right? I just, I just know what I'm doing here. And this will just be like, uh, you know, go back home, go back home, check, and then save. All right, and once that's done, I will close this and I will click on save changes. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go back to our website and we're going to enter in the wrong address here. We'll press enter and there you go. So it's telling us to go back home. Now we probably need to link this button over here uh, to our actual, like, you know, our homepage, right? So going back here, you would just enter like the name of your actual domain, right? Which is this, right? So if they actually click on the actual button right here, um, it'll take them actually back to the homepage. So that makes sense, right? So for the link, you just want to make sure that you paste the link for your original homepage. And then that should work, right? So I'll just uh, refresh this page here. And now if I click on this, this will take me right back to the homepage. And there it is. All right, so that is pretty much the theme builder summed up. Now there is a lot more to do with the theme builder. I'll be very honest, guys. I am barely scratching the surface with the theme builder. However, the global header, the global footer, and the 404 page is pretty much the most common thing. All right, so now let's talk about maybe you guys wanna add in a custom header for specific pages because maybe you don't wanna have the same exact header for all of your pages. This is very common. A lot of users tend to use a special header for their homepage. And then for like the services and the about us, it's a little bit more basic, right? So right here under the add a new templates, I'm gonna click on specific pages, but I only wanna select like the services, the contact and the about us. And then I'll click on create a template. Now I'm gonna delete this this one where it says global. And now I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know what? I wanna add in a specific custom header for those specific pages. So now I'll click on add a custom header. And instead of using the global header, I wanna click on build a custom header. What I'm essentially saying here is I wanna actually use a different style header for those specific pages. And just to speed this up, I'm gonna go ahead and import my template one more time here. And now let's say, for example, for these, um, for this menu, I don't want to have like a background, right? So for the background, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to delete the background, right? And maybe I don't, I don't want to have the button too, you know, whatever. <laughs> so the button, we got rid of the button, right? So this is our default header now for those pages. So now I'll click on save. All right. And then I'll close this and then we'll save the changes. So right now, if you guys can read this, we have a default, a template, we have a default a 404 page, but then we have a specific custom header and footer for the about us and two more pages. So let's test it. Here, I'll refresh the page. And now if I click on services, we should get a different uh, menu here. And there it is. So now we have this different menu. So it's a white, uh, it's a white menu and the button's also gone. So now let's click on the about us. The about us, the same thing. You guys will see that we still have the original menu. So this is how you guys can have a custom header. All right, so now let's go ahead and move into the blog aspect of this tutorial. So I showed you guys how to create uh, global headers and footers for four pages, and also how to use custom headers and footers on specific pages. Now let's talk about the blog, right? So if you guys do wanna create a custom blog and a, a custom blog post, I'll show you guys how to do that with the Divi Theme Builder. So right here, I'll click on add a template. And I first want to select the blog, right? So we first need to design the blog page where our posts will be displayed. So I'll click on blog and click on create template. Here you guys can see the uh, header and footer is already applied. So we just need to create a custom body for it. So I'll click on add a custom body and then I'll click on build a custom body. Now you guys can pretty much use any template that you guys find on the internet, or you guys can create it from scratch. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a pre-made template uh, available on my website. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the Arias layout. So you guys probably saw it already. I'm just gonna use bits and parts of it, and I'll use that uh, to create the blog section of this uh, website, right? 
So what I'm going to do over here is click on this. We're going to add this, use my existing pages. And uh, here are some pages that I have, right? So I just want to go ahead and select a random one here. I'll just select the About Us page. All right, and I'm going to change this here to blog, right? This will be like the blog page, right? And we can design this page. So you guys can design this just like, you know, any other page, right? So uh, just like you guys make any other page, uh, you can add modules here. You, you can design it using the Divi Builder. But I don't want to use all this right here, right? I don't really need all this. This, is, this doesn't really represent like a blog page. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to go ahead and delete some of it right here, right? I'm going to delete this section. I'll delete this section. I'll keep this section here. Actually, no, I'll, I'll get rid of this part right here. All right, there we go. So now we have these three guys right here. And then this section, we don't need this as well. We don't need this section either. Now, I'm just going to sort of modify this, right? I'm just going to imagine that these are my authors, right? Meet the writers. And that's pretty much it. So now we have the authors of the blog, right? So users can actually read the blog posts and then go ahead and say, oh yeah, I like this guy's writing style. Let's go visit his, um, you know, his LinkedIn or whatever, you know? But we also need to add in the blog module. So right here, I'll click on plus, regular, and I'll do a one column row. And then I will find the blog. I'll click on blog. Now these are where your blog posts will propagate. So every time that you guys write a blog post, they will display on this page. Now this is the uh, default blog with Divi. However, I don't like this one. I hate it because these images are just way too large and I just don't like the format. So right here under design for the layout, I wanna make this layout grid. I love grid. I think it looks a lot nicer, right? That's much nicer. All right. Now the cool thing with this blog module is that we can design this right here. So if we click on the gear icon, uh, we can actually design everything. So for example, for this image here, uh, we can change this image to something rounded or whatever. Um, over here, I'll change the title right here. So I'll use, I think we're using enter or something like that. Was it enter? There we go, enter. And maybe we can make this a little bit more lighter. I think something like that looks, yeah, I don't know. Maybe bold, I'm not sure, you know. Let's just, yeah, there you go. And then we can, you know, we can change the text size as well. It's a little bit too large. Uh, here we have the meta text. You guys, again, can just click on these little pencils and this will bring you to the part where you can design it, right? So I'll change this also to enter as well. And then maybe I'll make that, uh, actually we'll make this more lighter because it's not as important, right? And then for this text, we can uh, change this to whatever, you know? So we'll do enter as well. And then we'll just leave it standard. Maybe actually ultra light. Yeah, whatever. You, you guys get the point. You guys can design this and uh, knock yourself out, right? And then we can always design everything else from here, like the text size, the, the color, the alignment to fit the criteria of your current blog, right? So uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, a basic run on how you guys can customize this. However, I do wanna go over here to content and I do wanna set some restrictions, right? Maybe for example, you don't wanna display all of the blog posts, right? Over here we have content. You can change the post count, right? So. I'm just gonna say, you know, the last six blog posts I want displayed here. So that means only six blog posts will display. Now this one right here doesn't have an image. So make sure you guys add an image for all of your blog posts. These are the featured image, this is the title, and then this is the actual um, content of the article. You guys can also choose to include specific categories, right? And also here we have the content length. So here we have show excerpt, right? Excerpt is characters. So how much characters do you want to display? Well, here we have 270, right? But if you want to display like just 10 words from the article, this will only display, I'm sorry, 10 characters. It'll just display 10 characters. But I want to display up to like 250. I want users to get a, a good understanding of what the blog post is before they actually click on it, right? So um, yeah, that's how you guys can create a beautiful custom blog page using the Divi Builder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save this right here. All right. So what I'm saying here now is this is my new standard blog page. So when users click on blog, they'll be redirected to this page where they can read our blog posts. Pretty simple, right? Pretty easy. Let's go ahead and close this and then we'll click on save changes. Now, one thing I also wanna do here is for this custom body, I wanna actually save this layout. I'll explain why I'm doing that in a little bit, but uh, I wanna go ahead and save this. So right here, I'm going to uh, add this to the library, and this is my blog page. And I'll save this to the library. And I'll click on save one more time. All right, I'll close this. 
and I'll save that just in case, J just in case, you know, just to be on the safe side. So we have our blog page, right? But we also do have categories. And I also want to create a, a page for the blog categories, because if they actually go to the blog category page, they'll be redirected to that ugly default blog style. And I don't want that. So we're going to create a custom uh, blog category page for our website. So right here, add a new template. And then we're going to scroll down and you're going to see specific category pages. And here I have a business category. And then I also have the uncategorized, which is the default one that comes with WordPress. So you do want to create categories for your blog posts. And I'll explain why. Here, I'll click on business and I'll click on create a template. So now we have our blog post specifically for the business related topic blog post. Let's create a page for it over here, custom body, and I'll click on build a custom body. We got the little spinny wheel thing. That's cool. All right. Now over here, I'm going to go ahead and add in that one page that I saved, right? So we have your saved layouts and I'm going to select that blog page again. Here we go. Quick little import and we are all good. Now I'm going to adjust this a little bit, right? So I'm first going to adjust this to business, right? Cause this is the business section, you know, business blog posts, business posts. And right here, I'm going to click on the gear icon and we're going to go ahead and scroll down here. And for the included categories, I only want to select business. So what I'm saying here is I only want this page to display only the uh, business blog posts. I'll click on check and then I'll click on save. I'll go ahead and close this and then I'll save the changes. So you guys with me so far? So we created a blog page, right? And then we also have uh, categories for our blog posts. And what we need to do here is we need to create specific category pages for every category. So when users click on that, they'll be redirected to the categories that they click on. So now we need to create a page for the blog post, right? Over here, I'll go to plus new and page. So we have the theme builder uh, being applied to the blog, but we need to actually create the page. So here, this is the blog, right? Publish and publish. I'll close this. Now what I need to do is I need to assign that uh, page to the actual blog page in order for the theme builder to work properly. Over here, theme customizer. We have a home page settings and the post page. This is going to be the blog page. I'll click on publish. Now I also want to add that to the menu. So over here, we're going to go to the menus. I don't like using this menu to be honest. I feel like it's a little weird and it's really tight, but uh, why not? You know, who cares? Here we go. Uh, I'll add the blog page to the menu and then I'll click on publish. I'll close this. Now, do you guys see that, how that little like menu pops out and looks weird? That can all be fixed with the caching plugin. So after you guys install a caching plugin, that will be fixed. I actually talk about that in my Divi theme tutorial. So uh, yeah, a lot of users say, oh, that looks weird. It's just a caching issue. It's just JavaScript. You just clear the cache and it goes away forever, <laughs> right? All right, so let's take a look here. Let's click on the uh, blog here. So this is the blog, right? Cool, you know, we got our blog post. Now here you can see the category, right? We have business and then we also have uncategorized. If I click on the business now, you'll see that the users are redirected to our beautiful business posts where they see a list of all of the posts that have been in the business category. Now, if I actually click on the uncategorized, I'll go back here. Here we have the uncategorized. You're gonna see that it brings them back to the default one that comes with Divi. So you guys do need to create a category for each of your blog posts so that you guys can create a custom category page for all of your blog posts. Just remember, this can be done in the post section. So over here we have posts, right? And I'll just go to, you know, add new posts or whatever. On the right side, you're gonna see categories, right? So this is the business one. And all you need to do here is just make a new category for any of your blog posts. This can all be done right here. So for example, if you want to create a new category that talks about uh, health, right? This will be the, you know, your health category, right? And there you go. You have a health category and then you'll publish this and whatever. You guys can also add categories in the other section. Let me go ahead and show you where that is as well. Right here under categories, you can also create more categories here. For example, fashion, right? 
and then just click on add a new category and then you can create a new uh, fashion blog for your website, right? So here we have business and then you can add more to fashion and so on and so forth. So that's how you guys can create a custom blog page and custom blog category page using the Divi Theme Builder. Now let's talk about post templates. And this is a very uh, high in demand topic. So let's go ahead and go cover that. Here I'll go to Divi and go to Theme Builder. So now let's say for example, we have a blog, right? But I wanna actually create a post template for all of my blog posts. Let's do that. Over here, add a new template. And uh, we're gonna select, uh, let's see here, we have Pacific Post, right? But I'm just, I'm just gonna select all posts for now. So what I'm saying here is I wanna create a post template for all of my posts. Now you can get more advanced if you wanna create it for specific categories or even specific posts, you can do that. But I'm gonna select all posts and then click on create a templates, add a custom body and build a custom body. All right, now to speed up this video, I'm obviously not gonna build it from scratch. I'm probably just gonna pull from a pre-made template just to speed this up and I'll show you how to edit it. So right here, I'll click on the plus and we're gonna use a Divi one. And for the search, I'll type in post page. Now I'll be very honest guys, I am not a big fan of the Divi designers. I feel like they make these things look like Legos or something or, or Tetris. They're too blocky, they're too, you know what I mean? They're too blocky, they're too abstract. I really don't like it. <laughs> like I, I really, I'm not a fan of their design at all, but uh, whatever, you know, that's just me being a, a fellow designer critiquing other designers. I'm gonna select this blogger post page and I'll click on use this layout. And we're gonna practice with this specific post template. All right, cool. So here is the blog post that they have propagated for us. And you know, this is all just generic placeholder content. This isn't really, uh, you know, it's not a real blog post, but it's just like something that we can build off. But I first wanna go ahead and show you guys how all this is done. Uh, I'm using this just like as a foundation here, but I don't really want to use this. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this from scratch. So first I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this stuff, right? I'm just gonna delete everything and I'll show you guys how to build your own from scratch here. So I'll delete this and here we go. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make this a two column row, right? A two column row. And first I'll click on the add a new module and I'll type in image here. All right, so this is our image. Next, I'll go over here and I will type in a text module. All right, so here we go. We have a image and we have a text module. Now we need to make this propagate for our blog post. So this is gonna be our featured image. So right here, I'll click on the module setting and we're gonna make this dynamic. So uh, what I'm gonna do right here is I'm going to delete this, right? And when you delete this, you're gonna see this little icon right here. This is called dynamic content. This is basically saying that I want this to be an image that is dynamically updated to our blog post. So I'll click on use dynamic contents. And here we have featured image. You guys also see these other options, right? Author profile picture, whatever. I'll talk more about this in a little bit, but first let's just click on featured image. So what I'm doing here now is I'm saying that when I create a featured image for a blog post, that image will display right here. Now we need a title, right? So let's do this. Uh, over here, I'll click on the gear icon. And this is a paragraph text, right? But I wanna change this a little bit. I'll change this to heading one, right? And uh, we'll just put something here like, you know, something very simple, right? But we can design this, right? So for the heading text, I want this I want this bolded, right? So I want this to change the text. And this is gonna be our blog post title, right? Now, in order to update this dynamically, right here under the text, you're gonna see this little dynamic icon again. And this is also called dynamic contents. I'll click on this. And this is gonna be the post title this time. See how we have these different options? So we can make this dynamically update to, you know, the post categories, post tags, post author, so on and so forth. But I'm just going to select the post archive uh, title, all right, and I'll click on check. So what I've done here is I basically said, I want this to be my featured image and this is gonna be my title. Now, maybe you wanna display things like the category and also the author, right? Here, I'll click on the plus icon again and we'll select text. This time, I'm just going to select the uh, post categories, right, post categories. Now here we have before and after you can have specific content display before and after this. It's really optional, there really isn't a need for it, but if that's something that you wanna add, you can also add in characters like uh, search more. 
and then this will display before the actual uh, post. It's just, uh, you know, it's just something that you guys might want to add, right? Like our other topics or something like that, right? But I'll go ahead and just leave that as check. Now uh, let's add something else. Let's add an author box. So over here, text again, and we'll scroll down and I'll click on this and we will select the uh, author bio. Or actually, I don't know, what, what should we do here? Publish date, publish date makes more sense. I'll click on check and check again. So this is the date this article was published. So we have the title, the dates, we have the categories, and right here, we'll go ahead and select text again. And at this point, you guys can pretty much add anything that you want, right? We have the post author, right? This will display the post author's name. You can link the name as well to their archive page if you guys choose to do that. All right, but I'm gonna go ahead and just close this here and also close this. So in a nutshell, we've basically created a featured image. We've created a title, the date, the categories, and also the author. Now you guys can get a little bit more advanced here. For example, we have this little uh, module right here, right? Now, if I click on this right here, you're gonna notice this is not a text module. This is a blurb. So you guys can actually use other modules in conjunction to create your posts. So for example, this was all created with a blurb. So I'll walk you guys through on how to do that. Over here, I'll go to plus and we'll select blurb this time, all right? And here we have the title. We also have the, dyna the dynamic uh, content as well, right? So we can actually use this if we wanna do that for our blog post instead of using uh, this right here. So for example, we have the blog archive title, right? And then for this content, I'll say, you know what? I want this to actually be, I'll just select the post author here. I'll click on check. And then also for this image, we can do the same thing for the image as well. So here for the uh, dynamic content, we can make this our featured image. So you see here how I've done the same thing using elements from uh, Divi, right? And I'll just take this here and I'll just drag it down here just to give you guys an example. Now, there is one other thing that we need to add. We need to add the post content, right? So when we create an article, uh, where is our content gonna display? Well, I'm gonna delete this here and I want it to display right here, right? So I'll click on the gear icon here and here we have this content, right? Now, we cannot use dynamic content for the uh, post content. We actually have a module for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and we're gonna add it here. So plus, and we're gonna type in post content, right? And here we go, we have our post content. And then we can go ahead and modify this, right? Under the design section, uh, here I'll click on this little, I guess the pencil or the paintbrush, <laughs> whatever that is, right? And then we can just change that, right? So I wanna make sure that my, uh, whenever I create H1 tags for my blog post, I want to use this specific style. If I create H2 tags, I want it to follow this specific style and so on and so forth, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm basically uh, saying that the H1 tags, I want it to follow this style. H2 tags, I want it to follow this style, H3 tags, so on and so forth, all right? That is if your actual blog post has H1 and H2 and H3 tags. This will dynamically update depending on how you write your content. Pretty cool. So I'll go ahead and click on the check mark and let's just go ahead and publish this really quick. All right, it might look a little weird, but uh, not to worry, you know. Now let's go ahead and scroll down just a little bit more. And here we have more from this category as well. So next we have this section here, and this is just blog modules, right? So this is one blog module, two blog modules, and three blog modules, right? So um, yeah, I mean, you guys can choose to keep this if you guys want to, or you guys can specify categories for this section. Maybe you want this to be the business category section, right? And then this blog module, we can change this to something else. Like I want this to only be the health, you know, the health blog post, right? I don't have any, so I'll select uncategorized because I think we have one uncategorized, right? There we go. And then this section, I'll just say, uh, this is for another category and so on and so forth. So I do like this section. You guys can add uh, different blog modules and select different categories for those blog modules. So this section is referring to comments, right? And this is done also using the text module. So you can see here how this is one module and then this is an actual 
comments module. So right here, I'll click on this and you'll see this is comment settings. So let's just recreate it just to give you an example here. I'll just go ahead and delete this and I'll also delete this here and I'll just show you how that's done. Right here, I'll just type in the text again, right? Text. And then for the dynamic contents, we want to do the post comment count, right? That's all they did there was they just added in how many um, post comments this actually has. So I'll click on check and check. And then we can design that as well. Obviously you can turn that into anything that you guys want under the design tab right here. I think this is heading text. You can make this font enter, maybe heavy, and then maybe make this a lot larger, you know, and you know, put in whatever else you guys want there. Now for this specific section, you guys might want to actually use the before and after, right? So over here under the content settings for the text, I actually want to put comments and I'll click on check. So that's actually where that might be useful is saying this is how many comments are on this. Now over here, I want to add in the actual comment section. So over here, comments, and there we go. So you can see how uh, we have created that for our blog post. And that is pretty much it. As you guys can see, they also do have this other uh, thing they added here. This is just some random text. There is no dynamic content here available for it. And uh, yeah, so that's how you guys can create a custom blog page using the Divi theme builder. Now let's go ahead and save this and take a quick look at our blog post now. I'll close this and then I'll save this. Now this won't be very appealing obviously, but I'm just showing you guys how to do it. So over here, we'll go to posts and we can go to any post at this point. So I'll click on any post. All right, cool. So here we go. We have the actual title of the article, right? We have the date it was published. We have the category and we also have the author. If we scroll down, you'll see that this is also the featured image and this is the same theme, except we just use the blurb module. So I'm, in, I'm just demonstrating here that you guys can use the blurb module and other modules to create uh, the post title. You guys don't have to use only the text if you guys don't want to. And then here we have the actual content of the article. So you can see here how the content is self propagating here and they'll all display right here beautifully. And if we scroll down, you'll see that we have our blog of, I guess I wanna say categories and scrolling down here, we have zero comments, right? Because we don't have any comments on this blog post and I'll put great article and then I'll click on submit a con uh, comment. All right, awesome. So now you can see that this has dynamically updated to one comment. So you guys can go ahead and build this any which way you want. You can get very advanced and you guys can get very customizable using the actual Divi theme builder to create your blog posts. Now, just to help you guys out, I'll go ahead and put some free blog post templates that were created by Elegant Themes that you guys can use to uh, use on your uh, blog posts. So here they have like the title, right? And then they have the featured image. And then this is the post content. So now that you guys know how to use dynamic content, you guys can just go ahead and download free templates that you guys find on the internet and then just, you know, use those for your blog post. Also, they have this one right here. This one's pretty old, but uh, there's actually a pack of like three or four of them. And they're pretty good actually. <laughs> like they're old, but they're pretty good. Here they have the uh, title, and then they have some other description, and then they have the post content. And they do have some other ones here as well. Uh, there are three blog post layouts you guys can download. So this is blog post one. They also have uh, blog post two. And then they lastly have blog post three. And uh, this one's a little blocky here, not really my cup of tea. Actually, no, this looks pretty nice actually. So here they have a background image. They have the title. This is the dynamic title. This is the dynamic content. And these are probably, I guess, maybe images and stuff that represents the actual article. And then I think they finished it off with some other uh, information here at the bottom. So I hope this video was helpful, guys. Uh, I think by now I covered pretty much everything, right? For the Divi Theme Builder, I covered how to pretty much do everything. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Showed you guys how to do a header footer for a four page, uh, different headers on different pages, the blog, the blog category page, and all of your posts. So uh, yeah, be sure to mess around with the Divi Theme Builder and get more uh, comfortable with it. Also make sure to stick around and watch my second follow-up video where I'll be showing you guys how to use the Divi Theme Builder to create really nice, beautiful shop pages and product pages using the Divi Theme Builder. It's pretty helpful when you guys are building e-commerce websites and you guys can make some really beautiful uh, pages with the Divi Theme Builder. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys out. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below.
So as you guys can tell, the Divi theme builder is pretty incredible, right? There's a lot you can do with a theme builder. You can make your site go from something really plain to something that looks really modernized just using the Divi builder. I'll be having a part two series of the theme builder, so make sure to subscribe and stick around. My name is Daryl Wilson. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.